glory, 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 and glory. And the glory continues to fall as we rejoice in the glory. <laughs> God is good all the, all the time. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live, training session number 1422. <laughs> Hallelujah. I lost count a long time ago, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Where are we going? I would, yes. Holy Spirit, say go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. You know, the word says some things very powerful. It says judgment begins in the house of God. Amen. And, and in judgment, one of the things that God does is he chastens. He first convicts us. When we reject conviction, he chastens us. Amen. When we reject chastening, we fall into judgment. Amen. And that's when the enemy he has access to us. And he comes to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And that means a person will not progress any further. They can't grow. And so the Lord has set... Rules, laws, boundaries, things to protect us. In fact, he's set what we call house rules. Everyone say house rules. House rules. Every area, there's rules. There's the rules of the land. There's rules of countries. There's rules of cities and states and counties. There's rules. And underneath, the, associated with these rules, laws are actually a system of rules. And every law that's established is a system of rules involved in it. And these rules are, again, to protect. And, and by obedience to these rules, there are rewards. There is promotion. There is trust. And so as God establishes these things, and again, there, there are eternal rules, there are temporary rules. And these things are also called, every law has associated rules. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and verse 11, would you read it with me? Paul writes to the Corinthians. Now the Corinthians are believers. He's writing to a church. So he's not writing to unbelievers. Amen. Amen. And he says something powerful. He says, oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly what? To you, our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own what? Affections or desires or things that cause disqualification. See, because abiding by the rules of the house, you maintain qualifications. And verse 13, now in return for the same, I speak to you as to children. Well, children are rebellious, aren't they? They're not mature yet. They're learning. Amen. He says, you also be open. And he begins to set rules. He begins to state things. He's saying, look, and I want, I want, there's something I want to place in you so that you get understanding. He said, do not be unevenly yoked together with what? Unbelievers. People that are not standing right with God. Don't be unevenly yoked. Why? Because association brings impartation. Bad company corrupts good habits. Amen. For what fellowship has your righteousness with lawlessness? Everyone say, I am the righteousness, I am the righteousness of, God. of God. I am, I am the, righteousness the righteousness of God. Do you understand that you carry the righteousness of God in you? When you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you gave him your life, so you don't own one. It says, what communion has light with what? Darkness. And what accord has Christ with Belial? In other words, what, what, what accord has the presence of God with the presence of evil? And what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God? Everyone say, I'm the temple of God. And the righteousness of God. What agreement 
There's the temple of God here with idols. Idols. For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, what? I will dwell in them, I will walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my what? People. Does everybody see this? Then he says, therefore, if you will do this, every time you see therefore, it means you must cooperate. Therefore, if you what? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean. I will receive you, and I will be a what? Father. Father. Everyone say Father. Father. To you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. See, there's a difference. There's a difference in relationship with the Lord. In fact, the Lord said, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, thinking that he is their Lord, but he hasn't, the people haven't given them Lord over, over their lives. See, God wants to be Father. That is the highest honor that you can give to Him, is acknowledging Him and have a relationship with Him as a Father. So I, I want you to understand that Father is beyond God. See, people who are not, who live in the outer court, who, who are not right with God, call Him God. <laughs> They call him God. He's God. And again, there, there's that general God. And a lot of people have all kinds of gods in their life. But there's only one true God. And there's a place where people call him Savior. And there's a place where they call him Lord. But there's a place where you call him Father. And that's relationship. Until you, he, you can call him, you can't worship God until he becomes father. It's difficult. See, David said, I always put the Lord before him, me. David knew him. Paul, the apostle, knew him. The apostles knew him. They were with him. See, there's that area where he is father. And your desire is to get as close as possible as you can to him. That's why you worship him as much as you can. Because you know through worship, you're changing the atmosphere. You're bringing the presence of the Father, and you're denying yourself. Because self has no relationship with the Father. Only son does. Son and daughter has relationship with Father. Other than that, he's God, Savior, and Lord. So everybody get it? So Father is looking for those who worship him in truth and spirit and in power. Why? Because he knows that those who worship him in that arena are looking for him because he's Father to them. He's just not God, Savior, or Lord. He's Father. And you can't make it up. It's something you can't make up. You can't fake it. <laughs> it's an area of relationship that builds. It starts with discipline, leads to relationship, and relationship leads to love affair. So there's an area where God is saying, look at, here's my house rules. I want to be a father to you if you'll abide by these rules, if you'll come out from among them. Why? Because he does not have fellowship with sin. The word says he doesn't even hear the prayers of a sinner until a person repents. He told the Pharisees and Sadducees, you read about me in the scriptures, thinking you have eternal life, but you don't even know me. He wants you to know him as father. And that is the process that starts with discipline. It's the process that starts with going after him with all of your heart. It's a process of being consistent. It's a process of coming out among them and anything that interrupts or interferes with your relationship with the Lord. You're willing to cut loose. In 2 Timothy chapter 2. You know, I woke up this morning and I, and I was, I, it was after I invited the Holy Spirit, I was getting ready to go pray and I was like, you know what? What do you want to talk about? All of a sudden, instantly, before he can even finish asking what he wanted to talk about tonight, I heard house rules. And of course, I saw all kinds of things about house rules. 
And as I sat with him and he began to reveal to me certain things, he said, the main focus of this is because I want my children to become my sons and daughters and I'm their father. I want my family. I want my family. I don't want people to just know about me. I want them to know me. 2 Timothy chapter 2. In verse 1, let's speak it together. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a what? Good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the what? Rules. House rules. Does everybody get it? Competes according to the rules or the laws of the house that God has established. There are rules of engagement. Amen? Requires everyone to participate. Why? Because you'll either be approved or disapproved. You'll either be rewarded or rejected. Amen? You'll either be protected or an open door to the enemy. Again, there's laws of the land, country, state, city, town, federal laws, physical laws, sanitation laws, business laws. There are boundaries that are set that God has placed. In fact, there are contracts, which are laws. Again, a law is a system of rules to regulate and order its members for protection and rights. There are personal rules, temporary rules, and there are eternal rules. Each location of rules is established by a council, a counselor, Creator and owner. Has everybody got it? I'll say that again. Each location of rules is established by a council, an owner, counselor, or creator. Then they're rightly enforced by a judge in a court. <laughs> Hello? I'm going to say that again. So each location, like rules of lands and so forth, eternal, temporary, each location, of course we know they're associated with boundaries, is established by a council. There's a godly council. There's a council of God. We have senators and congressmen, legislation. Those are all considered council. Or a counselor, an individual, that's counseling. Or a creator. And again, then they are rightly enforced by a judge and a court. Has everybody got it? Praise God. Now, understand, when God places things with house rules, it's called divine order. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Anything that God speaks, requires, or commands is considered a rule or a law. It's not an if, but, or maybe. It is. Psalm 19, verse 7. Some things just don't change. We have a constitution that's considered a house rule. The problem is, is we have individuals that ignore them or try to erase them or manipulate them, but God's removing them to put those who are upright. There is the Bill of Rights, amen, which protect an individual. You have freedom of speech. There's all kinds of freedoms that have been established although some of those have been interrupted. You have the freedom of religion, which they're trying to take away also. 
But God will deal with them. Quickly. <laughs> Psalm 19, verse 7. Is everybody there? You only had one page to turn over. Let's speak it together. The law of the Lord is perfect. Hold on. The law of the Lord. Only his laws are perfect. Not, nothing else is perfect. Only what God speaks in law is perfect. Does everybody understand that? It's what? Perfect. Watch this. Verse 7 again. The law of the Lord is perfect. What's it doing? Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise is simple. Testimonies are also associated with rules and laws. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoice in heart. Again, rules and laws. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. These are rules and laws. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. These are all rules and laws. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your what? Servant is warned. We are what? Warned. And in keeping them there is what? Great reward. So in not in keeping them there is? Amen. There's not a reward. There is judgment. Amen. Does everybody understand that? The law of the Lord is perfect. Only his law is perfect. Exodus 20. It's called house rules. Exodus 20. So by maintaining the house rules, you will gain God's trust and he will give you more. By compromising the house rules, you will begin to lose his trust and he'll be taking privileges that he wants granted. You will begin to lose them. Amen? Exodus 20 and verse 1. God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The word Egypt means bondage. Out of the house of bondage. You shall what? Have no other gods before me. Come on, speak it with me. You shall not make your, for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the sea. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I am the Lord your God and I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to those to, who, to those who what? love me and keep my commands. Keep my what? Law, commandments or laws and rules. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it. Six days you shall labor and do your work. For on the seventh day is a Sabbath day, the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who's within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Verse 12. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be, may be what? Long upon the land which the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder you shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Again, these were what we call the commandments of the Lord. There were many. There was like 615 ordinances that God placed for rituals and sanctification and associating with animal sacrifice and all kinds of things. These were rules that he put into effect. He said, you can't, shall not uh, uh, eat blood because the life of the flesh is in the blood. In other words, you're supposed to, when an animal is killed, the blood is drained and then you cook the animal and so forth. 
So all of these things, God had ordinances. In other words, the law of the Lord is perfect. The house of Israel, these were the house of Israel rules. Let's go a little further. Now all the people what? Witness the, th the thunderings and the lightning flashes of the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they what? Trembled and stood afar off. Let me tell you, if God showed up right now, I'll tell you, there'd be a lot more obedient people if that were to occur. Half of them you'd have to pick up off the ground that just passed out. Verse 19. And they said to Moses, you speak with us. You speak with us and we will hear. But let not God speak with us lest we what? Die. Man, they feared. And Moses said to the people, do not fear. For God has come to what? Test you that his fear may be before you so you do not sin. So you do not what? Sin. Whoa. What was he saying? See, this is a house of Israel rules. Sin, what he meant by this is allowing the presence of evil to influence in forsaking house rules. Sin is forsaking house rules. Why? Because it's an influence of the presence of evil. Has everybody got it? Hebrews 10. Now he's told us that his laws are not burdensome. Why? Because he's already given us the power to obey. But there are requirements to maintain obedience. And that's obe uh, to abide. Hebrews chapter 10. And verse 15. Hebrews 10, 15. Let's speak it together. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us, for after he has said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my what? My laws or my rules, right? In their what? Hearts and in their minds, I will write them. So when you get baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, boom, they're there. Bam. You already know. That's why he convicts. That's why he chastens. You already know. You may never read the word of God, but you know what pleases him and displeases him. Does everybody understand that? We already know. The problem is my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they don't have sometimes anything to compare or they're not even desiring to please God. Verse 17, then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promises faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another and do so much the more as you see the day approaching. So is assembling, assembling ourselves together part of rules, house rules. Yes. Yes. Does everybody get it? <clears throat> Verse 26. For if we willfully, if, si if we what? Sin. If we willfully break the rules, after we have received the knowledge of the truth or the rules, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. Wow. In other words, you've broken covenant. But a certain fearful, fearful expectation of what? Judgment and fiery indignation, which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who's rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you suppose Will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, 
counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. Remember, he's talking to his own people. These are not to unbelievers. These are to believers. Why? Because he said, if you believe me, you will what? Follow me. Amen? So he's saying, just because you accepted me as Jesus, your Lord and Savior, you break covenant with me, you've lost salvation. I can no longer cover you. Does everybody understand that? See, there's a doctrine that goes around once saved, always saved, which is not the doctrine of Christ Jesus. It's not doctrine at all of Christ Jesus. Not at all. Because who you serve when you die is where you go. Verse 30, for we know that him who said, vengeance is mine, I will pay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will what? Judge his people. Verse 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me and my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring pos possession for yourselves. Where? In heaven. In heaven. Amen. So he's letting us know. Look at Breaking these rules of my house can cause you separation from me. Now, the word says we're not under the law, but that law is the law of sin and death. We are under grace, but what does grace mean? Grace is God's plan to escape. See, people think grace is some kind of unmerited favor. No, it isn't. It's unmerited love. I'm so tired of hearing this false doctrine of grace where people think they can go do whatever they want because they're under grace and make it home. That is not the doctrine of my father. Not at all. Who you serve when you die is where you go. And there's going to be a lot of people that are going to wake in the wrong place because they've been taught, taught wrong doctrine. And those who teach it will be punished. Is everybody okay? Ooh. Hallelujah. Let's go a little further here. Galatians 6. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1. Let's speak it. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you are spiritual. Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. The law of Christ, which are house rules. If anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have Rejoicing in himself alone, not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be what? Do not be what? Deceive. God's not mocked. For whatever man sows, he will also reap. For he sows to his flesh, will the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit, will the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not what? Lose heart or quit or break the house rules. Has everybody got it? Romans 8. So there's a law. It's a house rule called sowing and reaping. Nobody escapes it. Romans 8. Is everybody okay? House rules. In verse 1, Romans 8, verse 1. 
Let's speak it together. There, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. In other words, those who are in Christ, right? But he says something powerful. Who what? Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Well, according to the flesh means that you're breaking the rules of the house. According to the spirit, you're obeying the rules of the house. So he said, even though that you proclaim to be a believer, if you're not abiding under the rules of the house... You're not mine. Does everybody get this? But if you're abiding under the rules of the house, you're mine. Okay, let's go a little bit further. Verse 2. The law of the spirit of life. The law of the spirit of life. Life. So granted to me and you. Such an awesome thing that you and I, that God has sent us into this world and granted us life in a temporary realm, and then offered us eternal life to those who are willing to submit to the house rules. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in it that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and on account of sin, he condemned sin in his flesh. That the righteous requirement, every say righteous requirement. So there is a requirement, isn't there? And that requirement is to obey the house rules. Amen? That righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So it's fulfilled. Everything is fulfilled as you submit to the house rules. Verse 5. So walking according to the flesh is a walking according to your own rules and not God's. For those live, living according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be naturally or carnally minded is what? Death. That means you're setting your mind on only the things of me, myself, and I. Not according to the ways of God, but your own rules, not house rules. But to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. Because the natural mind, the carnal mind is what? Enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot what? They can't please God. It is called the law of the spirit. So by submitting to the house rules... You are pleasing God. If you don't have a desire to please God, then you are lost from the beginning. Living outside of salvation's truth. You are lost. And you first need a Savior. <laughs> Jesus. Then he needs to become Lord. Then Father. In Galatians chapter 5. House rules. Again, the Lord said, my people. Can you, can you imagine God, the Father, watching his own people being taken out by the powers of darkness? Losing them. Because they reject his house rules. It's, you know, I always look at it as like going up a ladder. There's steps up going up a ladder to get to another floor. When people break house rules, the steps disappear. There's no way up. Only when you begin to submit to the house rules do the steps reappear again. Galatians 5, is everybody there? Oh, Glory. Verse 16, I say then walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So if you're walking in the spirit, are you submitting and abiding according to the house rules? Yes. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So you do not do the things that you what? 
your wish or your rules. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law of sin and death. Now the works of the flesh are what? Now what is he doing? He's showing you things that break his house rules. The works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which is also associated with drugs and alcohol, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and anything alike that will break the house rules, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who do what? Practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God or what we call eternal life. Snap. Hmm. Led by the Spirit, not under the law of sin and death. Don't break any house rules. Listen, it does. Listen, when you break it, you repent quickly. Forgive me, Lord. But you don't justify and reason. And you don't, remember, repent says to turn away from it. Stop doing it. Now, there are areas where, you know, you're going to do something stupid. Like I've shared before, you might drop a hammer on your foot and go, oh, snap. <laughs> something might occur where you said something. You might be thinking something. You know, Gosh, Lord. And that's where you pull the shirt out and says, who told you that? You know? <laughs> Who told you that dot co? <laughs> Ephesians chapter four. That influence didn't come from above, that influence came from beneath. <laughs> Ephesians chapter four. Who told you that? Ephesians 4, 17. Is everybody there? Oh, glory, what a glorious night. <laughs> house rules. It's almost like the house rules. <laughs> Not only are there house rules, but the house rules. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 17, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind. In other words, you should no longer walk like the others who break all the house rules. Verse 8, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. See, it says alienated from the life of God. Why? Because you, it, you're alienated when you break the house rule. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. He said, but you've not so learned Christ. You've not learned the rules. If indeed you heard, heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you do what? Put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust because it's a lawbreaker and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. In other words, you're putting on a new man that is submitting to the house rules. And he, he warns us again, therefore put away what? Lying. That's a lawbreaker. Let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't what? Sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Do not give place to the devil. devil. Well, you give place to the devil by breaking house rules. Let him who stole steal no longer. Hello, stealing will break a house rule. But rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not what? Grieve the Holy Spirit. Man, you break the law. You grieve the Holy Spirit. 
Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all what? Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender heart of forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So is unforgiveness a lawbreaker. Yes. Yeah. Jesus says if you can't forgive them, he can't forgive you. Because you've broken a house rule. Oh, don't walk with the rest of the world that rejects the house rules of God. 1 Corinthians 6. And, but people can constantly say, well, I'm not under the law. Yes, it's called the law of sin and death, but you are under the house law, the house rules, every one of us is. Amen? Why? Because by submitting to them, you will produce righteousness. And by practicing them, because it's truth, you will be free. Free from what? Free from bondage. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 8. Is everybody there? No, you yourselves do what? wrong and cheat, and you do these things to your brethren. Do you not know that unrighteousness, that the unrighteousness will not inherit the kingdom of God? So unrighteousness is also known as lawlessness. And remember, laws are set by rules. So unrighteousness are those who are rule breakers or law breakers. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelries, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are what? Lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of what? Any. Foods for the stomach and the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who joins, he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought with a what? Price. Everyone say, I've been bought, I've been bought. with a price. It's no, my life, it's no longer my life, but his life. For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are what? God's. Everyone say, my body. My spirit is God's. Breaking house rules of God results in judgment. In what? Judgment. John chapter 2. House rules. Oh, glory. The Gospel of John in chapter 2. <clears throat> Remember, the reason why the Holy Spirit is bringing this forth is because he wants a position so that Father, so he becomes Father to us. Father. You know, even, even in the Old Testament, there was a preparation before the individual met the king. <clears throat> they had to go through rituals and washings and so forth before they even got before the king. And before they can even approach the king, the king had to set forth his scepter. 
If you approach the king without him setting forth his scepter, you are killed. In verse 13, <clears throat> It says, now the Passover of the Jews was at hand. Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers doing business. Where? In the temple. When he had made a whip of cords, hallelujah. Hey, my dad ain't no whim. He did what? He drove them out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out changers, um, out the changers' money and overturned tables. Man, he had righteous anger. He was in there, get out, kicking over tables. Out! See, that's what we need to do to our temple. Get out the thieves, get out the lies, get out the deception, get out the demons. Get out! Come out. Oh, glory. <laughs> I love this. So what did he do? And he, when he, and he, uh, in verse 16, and he said to those who what? Sold doves, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise or a house of den of thieves. Then his disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house is eating me up. See, we need to have zeal. That's love. That's a desire for the house of God. So when you love, truly love God, you love his rules. They're not burdensome. Does everybody get it? They're not burdensome at all. The house of thieves. He said, you know what? He was saying, get rid of these, those who lie, steal, cheat. You know, the Lord's trying to bring us into a place. One of the things that the enemy comes to steal is not only the blessings. He steals your identity. <laughs> he steals eternity. By breaking house rules, allows <clears throat> him to come and steal, kill, and destroy. Matthew 7. Matthew 7. In verse 15. Matthew 7, verse 15. Beware of what? False prophets, false teachers, false Christians. Yeah. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their what? Fruits. Do men gather grapes from the thorn, bu thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears what? Bad fruit. Bad fruit is one who breaks house rules. If a person is breaking the house rules of God, you know that it's bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. The tree represents the person, the house, the person's personal house, the spirit. Therefore, by their fruits you shall what? Know them. Are you ready for 21? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, remember? Because they only looked at him as God. He was really not Lord of their life. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the what? Will of my Father in heaven. So the will of the Father in, is in heaven is house rules. Many will say to me in, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice what? Lawlessness, because they were rule breakers. Does everybody get it? Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to be a wise man who built his house. Hallelujah. On a what? Rock. 
You, so what? You're, you're abiding, you're obeying the house rules of God Almighty and you're applying them to this house. And the rain descended, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not what? It didn't break the rules. For it was founded on the what? Rock, which is the anointing, the eternal presence and power of truth of God Almighty. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be an idiot or be a, like a foolish man who built his house on a what? Sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its, great was its fall. Lawbreakers of his house rules will have no part in his eternal kingdom. Again, remember, grace is the plan of God to escape. It's not an excuse to break rules. Proverbs 16. But if we do break a rule, we got an opportunity to what? Repent. Put it under the blood and turn away and start over. Or we'd all be dead. <laughs> there wouldn't be any need for any Bible studies. <laughs> There'll be nobody here. <laughs> Proverbs 16. That's why we serve a merciful God. You know, when, when mercy means that you call out to him and you're saying, Lord, have mercy upon me. What are you asking him to do? Consider you. What he does is when he considers you, he releases grace. And what he does is put you in a place to learn because if you don't learn, you're going to get Burned. Proverbs, what did I say, 16? In verse something. Proverbs 16, verse 32, I believe. Let's start with 31. Anybody there? What does it say? The silver-haired head is a crown of glory. Praise God. <laughs> it is found in the way of righteousness. Hallelujah. Now, don't everybody come with gray hair next week, all right? <laughs> he who is slow to anger is better oh, than the what? Than the mighty. And he who what? Rules his spirit than he who takes a city. He who rules his spirit. In other words, he's submitting to house rules and he's ruling his spirit, taking dominion. Has everybody got it? 1 Timothy 3. First Timothy chapter 3. <laughs> See, you can dye your hair, but God still knows it's gray. <laughs> First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, please. This is a lawful saying if a man desires the position of a bishop or, or what we might say a ruler or uh, authority in the kingdom, he desires a good thing. A bishop then must be what? Blameless, a husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospital, able to teach, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, and not covetous. One who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the house of God? Nor a novice, lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the what? The devil. So there's an area where we need to rule our own house. That means submit to his rules to maintain qualifications. Matthew 25. So that means if your children are disobedient or whatever, and you can't stone them to death because that's illegal. <laughs> 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 
even though it was legal in the Old Testament, like I said, none of us would be here. <laughs> Much you can crucify them. No. <laughs> Their flesh by leading them in the spirit of gentleness. <laughs> Matthew 25, verse 20. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. I like this thing. <laughs> yes. Would you read verse 20 with me, please? So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. And as the Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Wow. He who has, rece and, and he who has received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I've gained two more talents besides them. And as the Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. In other words, if you submit to the rules, you can become ruler. See, the enemy knows whether you are submissive or not. Because you submit to God, you have authority. When you're not submissive to God, there's no authority. And the enemy knows it. And that's why he attacks more then. Amen? Hallelujah. <clears throat> and verse 24. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you would be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there, there they have what, what's yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. Wow, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. You ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming when I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be what? taken away and cast it unprofitable servant into the outer darkness there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth an unprofitable servant is one who is a rule breaker does everybody get it James chapter 4 and where do wars and fights come from among you do they not come from your desires for what pleasure that war in your members you lost and do not have you murder and covenant cannot retain you fight and war yet you do not have because you don't ask and when you ask you don't receive because you ask amiss that you're going to spend it on your pleasures or your broken rules adulterers and adulterers do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Remember, the world does not submit to the house rules of God. It may, so if you want to be a friend of the world, that means you will not be submitting to the house rules of God. And you'll become God's enemy. He's not yours, you're his. Because he knows you'll betray him. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy, but he gives more grace, therefore he says... God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. He gives his plan of escape. Therefore, submit to God. Everyone say, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God. He'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will what? He will what? He will lift you up. Submit to the house of rules. You are able to resist the devil's influence and you will receive a reward from heaven. You deny God. You, do, you reject the house rules. Amen. 
and you'll receive a reward from hell. 2 Corinthians 5. Let's speak it, please. <clears throat> For we know that our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that what? Mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given the Spirit as guarantee. So the Spirit is given to me and you as a guarantee to assist us and abiding under the house rules. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be what? Well pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the what? Judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are well known to God and also trust are well known in your conscience. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf, that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. The judgment seat of Christ. In Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. And verse 11. Nobody escapes. Nobody. In verse 11, let's speak it together. Revelation 20, 11. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead and small and great standing before God. And the books were open. These were called the books of remembrance. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and hell, or Hades, delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Only those who abide by the house rules, their name will stay in the book of life. Everyone else's name will be blotted out. And I'm going to close at Psalm 97. House rules. Dad's house rules. <clears throat> My father's house rules no matter what. Psalm 97. And let's speak this together, please. Is everybody good? Amen. Are you blessed? Amen. You got understanding? Amen. Revelation and impartation and illumination. Well, you're about to explode then. Let's speak it. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of owls be glad. Clouds and darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. What's the foundation? Righteousness and justice. Verse 3, a fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about. His lightnings light the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. Let all be put to shame who serve carved images, who boast of idols. Worship him, all you gods. 
Zion hears and is glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoice because your judgments, O Lord. For you, Lord, are most high above all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. Say it again. You who love the Lord hate evil. Now, does evil abide by the house rules? No. So you don't associate. You hate, not the person, but the things and anything that breaks the house rules. That's why the word says separate, don't associate. Amen? He preserves the souls of his what? Saints. He delivers them out of the hands of the wicked. Why? Because if you're in the hands of the wicked, you're going to hell. Verse 11. Light is shown from the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. House rules. Daddy's house rules. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. Now, again, he wants to get us to the place of abiding under the house rules, which will establish a father-son, father-daughter relationship. Amen? Praise God. Lord, again, we thank you. We are honored and blessed. Let the seed be imparted. Give us the strength to say yes to abide according to your house rules because you love us, because your counsel brings correction, and your correction brings protection, that we may be protected and blameless and brought all the way home. Because that's what really matters, is eternity, not so much temporary. So, Lord, help us to abide under your house rules, that we may be blessed in the temporary and preparation for eternity. And let your glory come. So keep us, Lord. Keep us filled and keep us dressed in your presence and in your glory. In Jesus' name. Nobody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay blessed.